Welcome back. And so, in Nigeria, flooding and um, the means of addressing it have been has posed a, a great challenge from Lagos to Nasarawa to Kogi to Delta. You know, every year we have, we know the rains will come and then flooding will happen and put the lives of people at <coughs> risk. Sorry about that. <laughs> and put the yeah. lives of people at risk and, you know, create a whole lot of havoc. So how are we going to address some of these challenges? In 2012, it was, it was really, really, really bad, you know. And so we are going to look at this morning how to address this frontally. What should the government do? What should the people also do in terms of ensuring that when the rains come, we should just enjoy the, the season and not have to, you know, go through some of all of these challenges that we see every time. So we have in our Abuja studio, the Director of Engineering Hydrology at the Nigeria Hydrological Service Agency, Mr. Clement Eze. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay, so um, tell us, um, how prepared do you think we are for this season, you know, rains are here? Okay, um, let me correct. I am the Director General of the agency, Nigeria Hydrological Service Agency, the, the Director General. Go ahead, please. Okay. Now, how prepared are we? You know, there's a common saying that uh, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. And also, if a war is announced that is going to take place, my people will say that even a cripple will escape, will not be harmed. But the scenario is otherwise when it comes to the level of preparedness of Nigerians towards flooding incidents so that it had become a recurring decimal. How prepared are we? Well, I will say, for us as an agency or government, we have done what we are supposed to do. Issuance of warning, early warning alert, is part of our responsibility as an agency. Now, earlier in the year, precisely, a month ago, in April, uh, we went public. The Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Engineer Suleiman Adamu, made a public presentation of the flood scenarios across the country, in which 74 local government areas caught across about 31 states of Nigeria were implicated to be to likely, you know, experience or be at the risk of flooding in 2019. We have passed the message. Several stakeholders were there. And in this month of June, the Nigeria Hadoko Service Agency will step up action by going to carry out a sensitization program in different zones across the country. Now, the message has been sent out. It is led for relevant government, governments, stakeholders to take precautionary measures in the event of flooding, as predicted by the agency. But, you know, the information that, okay, this is going to happen in your state, or do you also um, work with the states to see how they can prevent this from happening? You see, the issue of flooding is what you cannot prevent. But you can reduce the impact, you can reduce the, 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 the level of disaster. Now, going by the prediction made public earlier in the year, by the Nigeria Meteorological Agency, precisely 
January 24th. They informed Nigerians, the agency NIMET informed Nigerians that there will be late onset of rainfall in Nigeria this year and that there will be early cessation. In other words, rainfall will start in most cities a bit late and it will stop earlier than it used to be before. And for us as an agency, it translates to the fact that you are likely going to have more amount of rainfall within a short period of time in Nigeria in 2019. Now, like we always mention it, there are two types of flooding, precisely two types. There are other you can translate to intermediate classes. But the one we have been expressing, like in Lagos, is urban flooding in Nasrawa State, even some part of Abuja is urban flooding triggered by either absence of drainages or blocked drainages or poor urban planning and then the rains will come suddenly. The runoff has no place to pass and then places will be inundated. That is urban flooding. But we are gravitating towards the one we call a river flooding. Because of the location of Nigeria, hydrologically, there are about eight other countries within the West and Central Africa that any rainfall that happens in those state countries must find their way down to Nigeria. That is river flooding. It often occurs between July, August, and September. We are moving towards that, and we are watching as an agency to be updating the nation. All right. Um, you, you've um, educated us about the, uh, the types of flooding that we have and um, where they occur uh, and all of that. We also believe that you have a budget to take care of certain things to ensure that the impact of these floods um, uh, are less felt by, by the people. What are you doing to ensure that based on your assessment, based on the predictions the people are taking care of. Can you share with us your plans and your partnerships and what you have lined up for people to ensure that the impact of this environmental um, hardship is not as felt? Okay. Um, our agency, you know, is at, at the upstream sector of flood-related emergencies in the country. We are the upstream. We are mainly concerned with what I may call the software aspect, the software. Software in the standards. Ours has to do with the release of timely information. We do not construct structures. We do not give a relief materials like NEMA does. We are concerned with the aspect of a relaying timely, accurate information to the society. Now, that is why when we pre do the pre prediction and make it public, we invite NEMA, the National Emergency Management Agency, and also the states, the SEMAs. We involve NOA, because NOA has the capacity to disseminate the information to about 774 local government areas in Nigeria. We involve NOA. We involve all the states. We invite them. And then we go further to visit locations ahead of time. Call the traditional rulers. The chief executive of the state emergency management agencies. We invite them. State governments. We invite them. Local governments. Local council chairmen. We involve them. We tell them this is what is going to happen in these locations within your jurisdiction. These are the things you have to do in order to avert the possibility of being flooded and then causing disaster. So our agency is not involved in going to construct dams, going to clear uh, gutters, 
they start the drains or to even build the drainages where they are not available, maybe on, on the highways. No, we are not involved with that. I want to give the information about the likelihood of the danger faced by the citizens arising from flood incidents. For instance, um, we monitor all the rivers in Nigeria. We know what is happening in the transboundary rivers, Niger and Benue. In conjunction with the other countries upstream, Guinea, Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, that's on the River Niger side, Benin Republic also, on the River Niger axis. We are in constant touch with them. Then on the River Benue axis, we work in conjunction with the Cameroon. Chad, these are the areas that contribute water into River Benue. Actually, River Benue comes from uh, Cameroon. The dam in Cameroon called Lagdo Dam. We are in touch with the authorities so that whatever is happening upstream, they will inform us. And we pass the same information to relevant authorities in Nigeria. And the states that are contiguous to these rivers, Niger and Benue, we notify them. Take steps. We monitor the evolution. If there is a flood in Niamey, Niger Republic, we can tell you when it will arrive in Nigeria. But fortunately for Nigeria, we have Kainji Dam. And we notify Kainji Dam about the Engineer Eze. That is entering Kai Engineer Eze, um, let, let's quickly cast our minds back to 2012, where Nigeria is said to have experienced the worst kind of flooding. 32 states were affected, um, 24 severely affected. So I, I would like you to tell us what the states the state government should be doing right now, if you know it's, it's not late yet, what they should be doing right now and what the people can also do to limit or reduce the impact of flooding that um, you said is inevitable um, in, in our environment. Now, what will the states be doing right away? You see, after the 2012 flood, We began in 2013 to present this prediction to Nigerians. Because uh, people didn't take uh, precautions on our prediction in 2013, the level of flooding, as we predicted, was about 70% accurate. Henceforth, the states began to take measures by educating their citizens. You see governors supervising clearing of drainages with their, their payloaders and the aid within equipment, clearing and even pulling down structures. They were doing all those since then, 2013, 2014. But later, they relaxed. Okay, uh, uh, you, you, you will continue with this, your line of thoughts, when we come back from this break. Um, just hold on and hold your thoughts, please. Welcome back. So, um, Engineer Eze, you were talking about some of the things that happened just after the 2012 um, um, flooding in Nigeria and what you said the states are not doing so much of. Yes. Um, we advocate as an agency that the state government should uh, step up action in clearing drainages in pulling down structures that are within the waterways or within the flood plains, and then enlighten the people that do their economic activities within the banks of the rivers, major rivers. A state government once told us that, that is Niger State, that they have what they call a wet housing and, and a dry housing. By that, that they build the structures at a higher ground, so that during the rainy season, those who are living within the flood plain doing fishing activities and farming, or more other things there, we move up land. At night, they go to the higher ground, as is during the rainy season. They go to the buildings they have built for them at the higher grounds to stay there at night. In the daytime, they will come back to the river banks within the flood plain to do their business and then go back again. Such could be 
replicated in the states, especially those that are contiguous to rivers Niger and Benue, so that at such times of the year, people can relocate. So the states have a lot to do. And again, it is a, it's very painful the amount of fresh water Nigeria loses annually. It runs is close to 200 billion cubic meters of fresh water that goes into the Atlantic Ocean every year. Whereas there are some countries of the world that do not even have such. What can't we build detention structures wherein these flood waters can be diverted for year-round irrigated agriculture? Those of us who live in Abuja, we talk about Jabi Lake. It is artificial. It was created. But we, the states, starting from Kebi, comes to Niger, Kwara, and so on and so forth, to Kogi, Anambra, Edo, rivers, Delta, Bayesa. River Niger will pass through, carrying so much that could be diverted somewhere to be detained, kind of diversion structures. Likewise, in Benue, River Benue entering into Nigeria at a point called the Wuroboki, where we measure it, the first measuring point in Wuroboki in Adamawa State, and then coming down to Taraba to Benue before meeting up with River Niger in Lokoja. A lot of water is wasted annually. And with a short period of time, maybe around uh, November or December, we begin to talk of having no water to do irrigation. What are we doing? What are the states doing? As an individual, I am an advocate of building small earth dams, small dams, to be able to arrest, especially the tributaries of Niger and Benue, like in River Benue. We are going to build a Kashimbila dam on River on River Kasinala. It contains a lot of water. What of the other tributaries of River, River Benue? You have Donga, Gongola, Taraba, a lot of them. They are the ones that feed into River Benue. At times, the, the government of Benue State, Adamaba, we think that uh, Cameroon has released water from Lagdo Dam. No, like last year in 2018, there was an allegation that, ben, uh, that Cameroon opened their dam, Lagdo Dam in Cameroon. On the 19th of September last year, that was a, it was a breaking news, even on NTA. But good thing, NTA people were around to interview us, and we call our colleagues in Cameroon, who said that the dam is yet to be filled up. So the people we can have small dams within the tributary of Rabenue, it will go a long way to check the inflow of this uh, you know, runoff into Rabenue that will, will cause uh, flooding within Taraba, Adamawa and Benue State. So we advocate that it can be done, it is possible to be done, to check excessive flooding within the cities of Nigeria, especially river flooding. Much um, engineer Aze, the Director General of Nigeria Hydrological Service Agency. And um, we hope that, um, you know, the state's government, individuals, all of us will be prepared to ensure that the impact of this um, the coming uh, flood, you know, will not uh, be too, 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 too bad. Mm. So we'll take a quick break and when we come back, we'll be for the home stretch.